DraftKings reported 2023 first quarter earnings results this morning and the stock is up incredible 15% after their announcement. So today I'm going to share with you the big picture from DraftKings earnings and talk about if the stock price increase was warranted and if investors should be buying DraftKings stock. So let's get right into these earnings results. Uh, total net revenue increased to 770 million. That was up 84% year over year. Dramatic growth at a time when investors would be hard pressed to find companies growing this rapidly, right? These numbers, these types of growth rates were more common in 2020 and 2021 because of the big fluctuations in consumer spending the consumer stimulus and all of that. But in 2023, I've been going through earnings season and DraftKings might have, up until this point, the highest growth rate year over year in any of the companies I've followed. Now, the net loss improved to 397.1 million. That was up from 467.7 million. To be sure, these are massive losses on the bottom line. When you're bringing in revenue of 770 million and losing 397 million, mm, that's a huge loss, right? And the at least the good thing for DraftKings and investors in DraftKings is that these losses are short-term in nature, and I will explain why. So DraftKings is an online gaming company, right? It's now live in 21 states for mobile sport, sports betting which represents 44 percent of the u.s population and it's in five states for eye gaming things like blackjack representing just 11 percent of the population so it needs to get approval from each state before it can operate there so that whole process is expensive for DraftKings, right depending on the state it requires a certain amount of spending to get these things approved to get permitted to get a license to operate in the state for instance they tried to get approval in california last year they spent millions of dollars on a campaign to try and get grassroots participation from voters in california to vote for legalizing sports betting on the ballot well they failed miserably right less than 15 percent of people in california if i recall voted to approve online sports betting well DraftKings spent a lot of money getting signatures on advertising trying to get people to vote for the campaign and it was all for nothing right they did they failed miserably they failed in such a bad way that made it less likely that they're even going to try in 2023 they probably won't even try to do it in 2023 right they're going to try and um work with the legislature and the existing uh interests before they try and do that so these are the types of things that are leading to massive losses and this didn't even include once they do get approval in a state they need to spend again aggressively on sales and marketing to tell everybody in the state hey we're open for business you can bet online now come join us here's a bonus to sign up so that's another cost uh, intense campaign that's what's been leading to these massive losses on the bottom line it's not that the business is structurally not profitable right structurally speaking this is a very lucrative business model right you all know the saying the house always wins right how much more is that the case when you're thinking about online gambling where the house doesn't have to pay for dealers, doesn't have to pay for maintenance, doesn't have to pay for all the staff to operate a casino, doesn't have to pay to build expensive buildings. And it can still run these games at very high profit margins that it just doesn't lose on, right? The odds are always in the house's favor. So longer term, it's a very lucrative business model. Shorter term, it's going to be expensive to get it to the point where it's generating these profits and there is no guarantee that will it will reach that point right there's a lot of opposition against DraftKings 
not only against its actual competitors online, but local brick-and-mortar casinos are not happy with DraftKings coming into the state, taking away potential gambling revenue from them, so they're fighting against DraftKings trying to slow their progress. Still, DraftKings increased their monthly unique players to 2.8 million. That was an increase of 39% from the previous year. Average revenue per user increased to $92, which is an increase of 35% from last year. So not only are they adding 39% more customers, but each one of their customers is spending 35% more. So they're getting that powerful one-two punch, more customers plus more spending each customer, leading to that massive increase in revenue. The good news is that there's some decreased promotional activity in the industry. This time last year, there was a lot more promotional offers, bonuses to sign up and all of that kind of stuff. That's all been kind of slowing down as companies are now more interested in achieving profitable growth and not just growth at all costs. And finally, DraftKings raised its revenue guidance because this quarter was so good. They said, hey, 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 now we think this year is going to be better than we, we thought it was going to be. Revenue is going to be $3.2 billion instead of the initial $2.9 billion we thought it was going to be. That would be revenue growth of 42% for the entire year. So overall, an excellent quarter from DraftKings across the board. I would have liked to have seen better improvement in the net loss. They did show some improvement, so I'm being a little bit picky here and asking for better improvement because you did grow revenue by 84%. So I would have liked to have seen a more meaningful improvement in net loss. But, you know, 70 million improvement is still solid. It's just, you know, when I see 84% revenue growth, I'd like to see better net loss improvement. Overall, to answer the question, um, was the stock price increase warranted? Yes, it sh the stock price should have gone up after this kind of quarter. Is DraftKings stock a buy? Mm, I would say it's on the borderline. If you're a very high risk uh, tolerant investor, you're willing to invest in very risky stocks, then yes, I would say DraftKings stock is a buy for you. But even if you're an average risk tolerant investor, I would say DraftKings is not a buy for those of you and those that are even less risk tolerant because of all of the risks I mentioned for DraftKings to ever reach that point where it can run this business profitably, right? It's got to cross a lot of hurdles until it gets there. If it gets there, it's going to be very profitable and lucrative. The question is, can it cross that that path in between to make it to that point it's going to be a choppy road ahead and unless you're willing to go through all those elevated risks then you should stay away but if you are tolerant and you you're willing to go for high risk for high return then go ahead and jump into DraftKings stock all right that's all i've got for this video thank you so much for watching I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now.